Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. I'm here to show you a really fun card. It's a fun fold here. It all interlocks in amongst itself, but it sits up like this and has these little panels here. And I saw this on a Facebook reel of Avi Renee Card Designs, A-V-E-E-R-E-N-E-E -E 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 Card Designs. So I just followed her measurements and made a card for myself using the Layers of Beauty. Now the Layers of Beauty is one of those stamp sets that we have right now that has the masks with them. And the fun thing about this one, it has the outline image that you can stencil onto with the masks but on this card we're going to do something different now this one I used the stamp and then I did my layering I'm going to do something I've never done before yet um, I did do it with the sunflower since the sunflower did not have a lined image and I do believe those sunflower masks are on the clearance rack right now so you can pick them up real um, good discount so we're going to be using the layers of beauty and I'm just going to show you it does have these dies that go with it and it has a big die that we're gonna be used later to cut out that big floral image. But I just noticed this little die right here. How cute is that? That can be used in so many things. I'm sure it's cutting out this little God bless here. So I just found that as I was getting prepare, prepared here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a not, um, we're not gonna use the outlined image. We're just going to make it masked off. So what you're going to do first is you, all of your masks, there's five that come in this set and they are labeled up here. Normally I'll put a, um, a Sharpie on here, which I may do after I do this. But what we're going to do first here is we're just going to know that this image is going to fit on. I used a four and a quarter by five and a half here, and I know that it's going to fit on here. Now what you're going to do is I just taped this down so it wouldn't move on me. And then you're going to place your mask somewhere and then you're going to take your pen or pencil and you're going to mark a little v right at the top now this little b is going to v is going to be very important for this type of card because if you can't use the lined image to kind of gauge where your masks are going you definitely want to line up each mask in that little v and see that little v is off the paper there so i think we're going to be good here okay so what i'm going to do here then is i am going to get you dizzy with my arms. I'm just going to take some temporary tape and I'm going to tape down this mask, okay? I'll hold it down here, but I want to tape it up here. I'm going to use daffodil. Oh, this is crushed curry. You know, first, first using daffodil delight as my first color. I'm going to use a blending brush. I These are some of the older ones that I have, but I like this because it was gold and it reminded me to use the gold. So this is the first time I've done this without having the lined images. So we're experiencing something at the same time. And I'm so sorry if you're having that little bit of a glare. Now I want to make sure that doesn't move on me because this is going to be my first layer. So I want to be very careful. Some of these, this one not so much, but a lot of these masks have delicate little pieces. And if you get a little too forceful with your blending brush, you are going to kind of pick up those. Now I want to make sure I'm getting a good line right around the edges. So I'm going to do that. And remember, we're going to be layering three flat to, uh, three stencils on here. So even if it doesn't look like they're all filled in, that's okay. So that was one. And remember, I have that V up here. Now I'm going to remove this. My next layer I'm also going to do, and see this is why I taped this one down with scotch tape, because I was sure it would not move. Now I'm going for the number two now. I'm lining up that V, and this is gonna be very important because I can't see a lined image there. So I'm just taking, I'm taking the word of the stencil that it's gonna work. Some of them you can see look like they're already covered, but this just gives another layer and I'm just gonna obey the rules and the directions even though I can't see, this is, like, see, I just pulled that up. I got a little bit too, um, this is where it's good to use uh, sponge daubers as well. 
but you can see like this is very delicate right here and when I started sponging I went like this so kind of look and see where those delicate pieces are and make sure you go away from that piece like I should go up across it instead of down through it and get some over here and I have to tell you it wasn't until I got that third layer on that it really popped for me so that was our second layer of daffodil uh, I can't wait to get these nails done tomorrow because they are just too long but you can start to see where that image is coming out okay and like I said it takes till the third layer and I'm going to be doing this number three layer this is staying nice and tight to my paper and we're gonna see that you cut you follow that V up in the corner just trust it I'm gonna do crushed curry because on this card I saw when I put that crushed curry on it really popped that yellow so here we go look at my crushed curry ink pad it is I don't know what's happened to it but it needs something okay holding it down I see that it's going to get a darker color in the little middles of those yellow flowers right here. This one isn't as delicate as number two. Number two is the real delicate one. A little more crushed curry. Wow, I'm shaking my whole desk here, which means that camera is shaking too, so sorry about that, guys. I know a lot of you guys understand it, but there are a few who have commented that I was making them dizzy, and I don't want to do that. Now, we've got all of the crushed curry on there. Now, we're going to lift this and see how it looks. Hopefully, get it out of that, that ring. Ooh, look how pretty that looks. Okay, that's number three. You can see that flower forming, and it's going to have a different look than when you have a different look... And when you have the blind image around it. Now we're going to be using garden green and we're going to do number four. So number four are leaves and once again we're going to rely on that V because we do not have a line to go with. But I can kind of see where the flowers get covered up there. Okay now I'm going to be very careful with this one because it does have some fine little pieces on it. So get some green. Okay. I'm excited to see how this is going to look here. And just remember, once we get this done, we have a fun fold included in this video, too, that we're going to do, which is really fun. Okay, green, getting these leaves. And as you notice, I, I adhered it on top and bottom because there were a lot of little pieces to this stencil, and I certainly did not want it to move either. Okay, there we go. We have our first layer of green leaves because there is another one. Okay, lift that up. Oh, look how pretty that's getting. Yay. Where to put all these masks across my desk here? Even though I have a huge desk, it's always covered with something. What is this here? Oh, I was like, what is that? A little piece of misty moonlight paper. And this was just green ink, okay. But I'm gonna be die cutting this anyhow. Once again, number five up there. Oh, my nails are terrible, please forgive me. Awful, awful. Okay, that's what happens when your time is not your own anymore, once you're a Grammy. <laughs> okay, yes, I'm gonna be watching my little Grandy girls, the three and a half and two and a half. Mom and dad are going on what I guess they call a baby moon, a little vacation before the next one comes. So they're going away for three days this weekend. So I'm going to have the little ones. And just recently they were over here for um, an air, air conditioning problem. And I actually had my little Edie die cut some things for me. She's three and a half and I just watched her, but she wanted to use that machine that was on my desk. And so um, I set up a little place where they're allowed to use some old markers that I have and they color and then they stamp and then they say tap, 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 press. And so they're doing pretty good. But then I didn't realize they were putting the one color in the other color. <laughs> Look how gorgeous that is. So here we go, kiddos. Look how pretty that, I mean, that is, that is gorgeous. I actually 
I actually almost, I don't know. What do you think? Lined image, not lined. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. So what I did is made a negative here. Now, when I make this negative, but you know what? Before we do that, I am going to take a second to totally wash off my hands here because I don't want to get, um, just get some wipes here, get um, the ink off my hands. I don't want to mar up my card. Okay, there we go. So what I do is take this negative and I'm gonna put it around the image. I think it's like this, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna put it where I can see it's supposed to go. And it looks like it's going nicely. So I'm gonna adhere that down with some temporary adhesive there. Okay. And the next thing I'm gonna do is take the die. So here's the die. And I'm also gonna have some temporary adhesive on here so that I just put that die right into that image. Now, there was somebody who was watching my video the other day and didn't understand what I meant by that. I kind of explained it, but I didn't show it. This is exactly what I'm meaning, is if you cut out a negative and you put it around your image and then put your die into it, it should cut perfectly. But I am actually going to put one more little piece here. And even though it seems like I'm being a little excessive with my temporary adhesive, it, it secures the card well and I have it secured there with that glue, right? So, I, d I mean the tape. So, I want to get my card untaped under there. Ah, I should have did that first. Okay, let me see here. Let's go through here, get that tape pulled off there. Okay, it didn't matter on that corner there. Now, let's do the same thing over here. Get that tape off of there. Alrighty. Now we can take this over to the big shot, but you can take a little peek at that while I come over here and cut. Just putting it down into my machine and rolling it through using my cutting with my platform, an acrylic plate and another acrylic plate. Bring it over so you can see it. Whoop. I guess we can get rid of our little scratch paper now and bring back our pretty image, which I hope that it that it went really nicely because I kind of rolled it pretty fast. Okay, so I can save this negative for um, another job. And sometimes I'll just stick it right into my stamp case, but look how, uh, it's a little off because when I put it down, when I lifted it up, sometimes I like to do all the taping whenever it's on my card. Um, so I'm gonna say that I'm okay with this, but because I already have everything cut, but normally I might have wanted to, but I did all that work and there is white around it all. Okay, this is what's more important, right? is getting the card together. But it did move a little bit on me. Do you see I have a little bit too much white on this one edge here, but I think it's when I lifted it. So if you're gonna do that, do it right on your plate of your Big Shot and then you'll be able to have a better um, cutout image that way. Okay, so this piece here, the card base, is 10 and 3 quarters and then it's five and a half high and you're gonna score it at one and five eighths and three and a quarter. So one and five eighths, little tick mark after one and a half, and then three and a quarter, then just flip your paper and do the same thing again, one and five eighths and three and a quarter. And then I always like to fold on that, the uh, mountain side that's pressed up. So that's your card base. It's gonna fit into a, a two size card. And then we are going to put in a green border here. Oh yes, it does just, just about, um, I hate to, to um, use a whole quarter sheet of my cardstock like that, but you don't want to cut anything out of the middle of that because you are going to put this white down that 
could get bumpy and lumpy. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp on this now while I have it out of here in case I mess up and then I can put something else here. And what I just did for this one is I just put, you make me, you make my heart smile. So I'm gonna put that right down here at the bottom. You make my heart smile. And then I have a pretty little flower that's also in the stamp set, just a little flower. And I'm gonna put that there, stamp. And then I just took and colored in, I think I colored it in with this one, with a little granny apple here. I just put a little bit of green in the leaf, leaves. There you go. And then I took, and this is dark daffodil because with all the colors that happened in the front of the card, um, you wanted to, I used light, light at first and it was, um, and then I just kind of really colored over this to make it a little bit darker in the middle there. So you got a cute little inside done. And let's close up these ink pads before they get into something. Oh, you know, I keep looking at that card. I mean that flower and it is driving me bonkers that it is not cut perfectly. Hmm. So I may do it over again. Before you see the pictures, you know you can go to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. It's right underneath the YouTube descriptions. It says, visit my blog here. Just press that link, takes you over there. You can see additional photos, links to my online store, which are also under the YouTube description. So I may actually end up doing that over again, but I can still show you this card here. So you have two panels. The larger panel goes on the left side and the smaller panel goes on the right side. This is your border is three by five and your DSP, and this is from the Christmas Take a Bow, and it is two and three quarters by four and three quarters because this was three by five. You went into two and three quarters by four and three quarters. So we're just gonna pop that onto there. Okay, here we go. And there we go. And then this one is going to go right onto this. You're just gonna get a nice, it's only gonna be going, I'm gonna put my glue on here because I know it's gonna go in this area, okay? Because I'm gonna get, create a border that's the same on the left, top, and right, okay? So I can put that down and I can see that I have the same amount of space going across there, and that's that panel. Now this panel is a little bit smaller. It is two and a half by four and a half, and this is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. So two and a quarter by four and a quarter DSP. This could really, really be pretty for, um, make this card and then put some kind of Christmas image on the front. I just wanted to use my flowers. Okay, so once again, we're gonna be using just the center portion so you can kind of know where it's gonna go, okay? And I like to close this up because this is gonna come over this. So this way, if I have it closed like this, I can actually make sure these two sides get about the same amount of DSP. So you can see I have the left and the right, but I also can see right here that I have the same amount of space. Now the card itself is supposed to fold like this underneath your image over here. Now this is where we would put our flower on here. And we would put our dimensionals just under where, like see how this slides, the big panel on the left slides under the fold and then the small panel goes under the flowers like that, okay? And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put Grateful For You, and I just used our, I do believe they are called the Nested Essentials. Yeah, I used the Nested Essentials little banner, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that on, okay? And it just gets put right coming off of the green into the yellow, the little space there. 
and it can be glued the whole way because it's going to, you know, like I said, this is gonna go under the flower. This, once again, this closes first, then this, and then you're gonna put the flower adhered here like this. Okay, grateful for you. You make my heart smile. So isn't that an easy, fun fold to do? Once again, put the folds that way. And again, thank you to Avi Renee Card Designs. So once I get this on my blog, I want you guys to tell me which, I think it almost has a more realistic look on it without the lined image, but the lined image really makes it pop too. So I'm gonna try this again and die cut it a little better. But so, but what I'm saying is you have to make sure that you don't have any dimensionals under this area, just the area. And I kind of placed it and played around and put a few here. And then when I saw where this went, I, I knew I made a mark with my finger and then I stuck some dimensionals in there, but you want it to slide under your image there because this is a floral image that kind of covers the whole card. It was a little more, but it, say you were making a circle on here, it would be a lot easier to pay attention to that. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, all of our stenciled mask sets are really beautiful. We have um, another rose one, but it's more, um, how would I say, it's not as realistic as this one. We, I made a really pretty card and I'll link to that. And I really like that too, but I like this one because it had a more realistic kind of hand-drawn um, roses on there. I think you could do this for Christmas with some red roses on there. It has a happy anniversary, which is a great sentiment to have when you need that. Grateful for you for the fall. And the reason I use the yellow is because yellow means friendship. Yellow roses mean friendship. So I hope you have a great time trying this, uh, this fun fold out. I'm not even sure exactly what kind of fun fold it's called, <laughs> but I am going to redo that stencil and I'm going to time myself how long it takes me to do. And then I can even tell you in my vlog post. Thanks for buzzing by friends.